Hey everyone, it's Dr. Dan. Today we're gonna to be talking about all of the life-changing treatments you have available depending on which stage of chronic kidney disease you fall into. Let's get into it. Starting off with chronic kidney disease stage one. If you happen to fall into this stage, that means your EGFR is looking to be around 90 or above. And to really start this off, it's probably something you hear all the time, but at this point, your body is sending you warning signals, and what you wanna start doing is start drinking water. It is recommended to drink approximately 2.5 liters of water every day. The benefit of doing so allows more blood flow and a higher blood flow rate into the kidneys. Not only is that facilitating more toxin to be removed, but you're actually bringing more nutrients into the kidneys themselves. Bottom line, drink more water, and not only are you gonna prevent any more deterioration, but by drinking more water, you are reducing your chances of getting kidney stones. So the next one is CKD or chronic kidney disease stage two. If you happen to fall into this category, your EGFR is gonna be between 60 to 89. At this point, there are showcases of mild kidney damage. Something not to panic about, However, if you haven't implemented anything during stage one, stage two is where you need to start and take it seriously. If you haven't already started drinking more water, this is the time to really dial that in. But for those of you who have already improved on how much water intake you're having, here's the next recommendation, a low protein diet. Low protein diet is actually recommended for you to ingest protein at levels of less than 0.8 grams per kilogram per day. To do the math there, you take 0.8 grams, you multiply it by your weight in kilograms, and that is how much protein you should be ingesting for the day. 0.8 is still considered low, but gradually over time, if the numbers continue to go down, you wanna be eating at 0.7 or even 0.6. The benefit of eating less protein is taking the stress and pressure off of the kidneys themselves. All of our kidneys have billions and millions of nephrons, and each nephron has something called the filter capsule, I like to call. This filter capsule actually does not allow protein in. So every time you have thick amounts and high amounts of protein in your blood, it continuously hits that filter capsule. Now guess what happens over time? It deteriorates and the protein actually goes through that capsule all throughout the neuron, further damaging structurally our kidneys. Not only that, when you have a lot of protein in your blood, you have a higher blood flow rate. When you have a higher blood flow rate, you're putting more pressure on the kidneys and overall you are deteriorating your kidney health. Next is chronic kidney disease stage 3A. And if you're in this stage, you happen to have an EGFR of 45 to 59 or within 60. Stage 3A is problematic. That's when the red lights start flashing. Stage 3A means that your risk of dying from cardiovascular causes are now double or 2x multiple compared to a person who has normal kidney function. If you haven't already started increasing your water intake, if you haven't already started eating a lower protein diet and adjusting that like we just talked about, this is where we start using medicine. And the first thing that providers usually reach for happen to be an ACE inhibitor, which is lisinopril, or an ARB, which is Losartan. From that moment, they're going to be tracking your EGFR routinely as it progresses. Hopefully it stabilizes, but however, if it continues to dip lower and lower, closer to stage 3B, that is when another medicine is involved, and that's called Farsiga. Farxiga happens to be a different class of medicine called an SGLT2 inhibitor, and the purpose of that is to further add on protection in preserving those kidneys. Now, what happens if I continue to progress into stage 3B, which is an EGFR of 30 to 44? Now, if you happen to be including all of those lifestyle changes, 
if you're already on an Acer and Har, but the maximum dose, if you're actually already on Farsiga, the SGLT2 inhibitor, well, there is another class of medicine that is called Carendia. Carendia actually facilitates more kidney protection, but it usually is considered last line and for the people who are dipping even lower. Now let's talk about chronic kidney disease stage four. If you happen to be in this stage, your EGFR is from 15 to 29. Your kidneys now have severe structural damage. They are on borderline not working at all. At this point, we are maxed out on all of our medicinal options. And last but not least, chronic kidney disease stage five. If you happen to be in this stage, your EGFR is less than 15. Severe structural damage, your kidneys are no longer functioning. What does that mean? The only maintenance treatment you could be on is dialysis, which happens to be three times a week where you would have to be going to one of those dialysis centers. The only real fix to that, and it's something that even Tina Turner dealt with in her life, is a kidney transplant. Other than that, we're hoping that you don't have to be at this stage, and we're really hoping that you've incorporated all those other options that you have available to you to prevent something like this from happening. The point of my channel, the point of these videos is one message, and to make it clear, you need to be proactive, not reactive. When you start seeing even 99 of your EGFR and everyone tells you that's just stage one, it's no big deal, try to treat it as a big deal. With that being said, please consider subscribing and watching these two videos that talk about not only the awareness we're trying to build, but also the different stages and what they mean in your chronic kidney disease journey. Guys, thank you so much and have a wonderful and blessed day.